big news about Netflix. Today, the streaming giants saw their shares drop lower than your grandma when they play September at a wedding. <laughs> and when you're a company worth $150 billion with 200 million subscribers, your crash makes everyone panic. Shares of streaming giant Netflix cratering after the company reported losing subscribers for the first time in more than a decade. That stock is losing about a quarter of its value in pre-market trading. It was already down more than 40% year to date. Netflix saying more than 200,000 subscribers left the service in the first three months of the year. Now observers are asking if viewers will have to binge watch their favorite Netflix show with ads in between. It's something CEO Reed Hastings hasn't ruled out. Allowing consumers who would like to have a lower price and are advertising tolerant um, get what they want makes a lot of sense. Damn, Netflix is in trouble. <laughs> Which is so surprising because me and the 43 people I share my account with, we're still watching it <laughs> all the time. We watch all the time. Like, I thought they were doing well. And. And you know how you know Netflix is in trouble? Is because they're even considering ads. Yeah, they're gonna have like a separate ad section of Netflix if you don't wanna pay the full thing. You and you realize for years, Netflix has hated ads. Yeah, the idea of, they treated ads the same way French people treat everything. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, what are you breathing? Oxygen, <laughs> uh, What a loser, where do you live on Earth? <laughs> You're not living. <laughs> now, now. There are many reasons why Netflix subscriptions are down, right? Password sharing, uh, inflation, uh, Reggae Jean Page leaving Bridgerton, yeah? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry, you want us to pay 15 bucks a month without that ass? I don't think so. I don't think so. $12.99 at best. And now Netflix executives are being forced to consider multiple options. The only problem is knowing Netflix they're just gonna scroll through those options for like 45 minutes before <laughs> they give up and just put on Seinfeld. <laughs> you know, if you ask me, if you ask me, there's no reason to panic, right? There always, people like to panic, stock market, this, stock market. But remember, this was always bound to happen, right? Remember, the Netflix reason, the reason Netflix became Netflix in the first place is because it was the only thing out there. But now, there are tons of streaming services. People wanna know, is this the one that's worth my money, you know? Does it have the widest variety of options? Like, what if someone's looking for the Champions League and Picard and 1883 plus Rugrats and Paw Patrol for the kids? <laughs> I mean, only Paramount Plus has that full range and quality. <laughs> and most importantly, they keep me employed, so that seems like a pretty good deal to me. Yeah. Look, man, the point is, the point is, the king of streaming is struggling right now. And I really hope that they make it through. I honestly do. I like Netflix, because without Netflix, there's no Netflix and chill. And that would be a disaster. <laughs> we need the pretense of watching Netflix for six minutes before we start the sex. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, what are you gonna text people? Do you want to come over for sex? How would that even work? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's make like a retired dentist and move to Florida. As you know, America's flaccid penis recently passed <laughs> the don't say gay law. You covered your face like you've never seen, you've seen that. You're like, ah, oh, that's the first time you've looked at it before and you said it was flaccid. <laughs> so they passed the Don't Say Gay law, which puts limits on how schools can talk about sex and gender issues. And this has upset a lot of people, including the folks at the Walt Disney Company, because so many of their creative staff are LGBTQ. Yeah. And if you're surprised, how can you be surprised? Like, what do you think? Why do you think Disney's always killing off straight parents? They hate breeders. <laughs> think about it. It's a conspiracy. So, Disney denounced the bill. And then Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, he denounced Disney. And now, the feud is escalating even further. The feud between Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and Disney is growing. Yesterday, he asked the state legislature to repeal a 1967 law allowing Disney to operate a private government for its properties in the state, including Disney World. Disney's special self-governance, which covers 40 square miles, allows the company to provide many of its own services, like fire departments, road construction, and building and zoning. The move could leave Disney on the hook for millions of dollars a year in local taxes and with less autonomy over its property. This state is governed by the interests of the people of the state of Florida. It is not based on the demands 
of California corporate executives. Oh, yes, DeSantis, so sassy. Look at you with your one hand, huh? <laughs> Just doing like a little one hand Trump. We're not gonna be told what to do, not at all. Mm -mm -ah. But yeah, the governor of Florida is using the power of the government. Listen to me now. He's using the power of the government to punish Disney because they don't agree with his politics. Yeah, hey, can, we, can we just admit that most Republicans are not even Republicans anymore, right? Because for like 100 years, the whole thing has been that there's nothing worse than the government telling businesses what to do. <laughs> and now they're gonna use the law to punish corporations for their opinions, all because they think that Disney's gotten too woke, yeah? <laughs> and Minnie's had a few abortions the past few years. <laughs> Sorry, was I? Oh. I, she told me that in confidence. I'm, <laughs> Nikki didn't know. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought corporations were people, or in Disney's case, rodents the size of people. And it's especially <laughs> weird to hear these Republicans now saying, corporations are getting too many special deals. We need to have stiffer regulations and make them pay more taxes. More taxes. That's what Ron DeSantis is saying now for a corporation. So basically, conservatives are so freaked out about wokeness that is turning them into liberals. <laughs> yeah, it is. In fact, in fact, <laughs> if you think about it, if liberals, if liberals are smart, they should start harnessing this and like hyping up oil companies, you know? <laughs> yeah, AOC should just come out and be like, ExxonMobil is such a good ally, they support Black Lives Matter, they always use people's preferred pronouns, and then all of a sudden Republicans will be like, what? Destroy Exxon, tear them down, <laughs> cover them with solar panels. <laughs> We gotta end this wokeness. <laughs> now, I will say this, I will say this. Ron DeSantis aside, aside, I do think it's a little weird that Disney gets all these special perks where it's basically its own country. Do you understand how crazy that is? Like, I never knew that they were allowed to run their own government, basically. <laughs> you know, the only thing I did know is that they have their own jail, yeah. <laughs> No, I, I, I didn't know, and this, this is true. In Disney World, if you get in trouble, they have a little jail that they hold you in <laughs> until they sort out the issue. Yeah, it's their own jurisdiction, their own everything. I've actually been in there, but it was only because I jumped off the ride in the middle, like in the Africa part of It's a Small World. I thought I saw some of my friends. <laughs> it was a misunderstanding, it could have happened to anyone. <laughs> and, like, so people are like, ah, see where? And then I jumped and there's a whole thing. <laughs> but still, man, it's pretty ballsy of the sanctions to pick a fight with Mickey Mouse. Mickey is one of Florida's largest employers, and he never turns the other cheek. Oh boy, Ron DeSantis claims to be a conservative, but right now he's acting like a liberal bitch. He's raising taxes on a beloved Florida corporation. Say hello to $50 turkey legs. He's using big government to silence our small family business. I guess it's a socialist world after all. You didn't hear this from me. When Ron DeSantis went into the haunted mansion, this loser straight up shit himself. No joke! He got so scared from a children's ride, he made a big old dookie right in his pants! Ha huh? ha! Ron DeSantis is the dumbest mother I know. And I'm friends with a guy named Dopey. Ron DeSantis. Wrong for Florida. Wrong for America. Pooped his pants. I'm Mickey Mouse, and I'll cut a bitch. Wow. Mickey does not play around. <laughs> All right, our final story is about birthdays. You know, the day we celebrate the last time we saw our mom's vagina. <laughs> I mean, maybe you creeps, I was a C-section baby. <laughs> now, uh, it may come as a surprise, but not everyone loves celebrating their birthday, as one company in Kentucky learned the hard way. A judge has awarded a Kentucky man $450,000 after his former employer threw him a surprise birthday party that caused him to have a panic attack. It happened in 2019. Gravity Diagnostics threw a surprise lunch for Kevin Burling after he told his office manager he didn't want the company to celebrate his birthday because he suffers from an anxiety disorder and said that the stress would trigger a panic attack, which is exactly what happened. So Burling had to leave the party because of an attack, and according to the suit, he was then criticized by his bosses, which triggered another attack. He was fired a couple of days later. Last month, he won his lawsuit for disability discrimination and retaliation. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, good for this guy. Good for him. You know why? I saw people online 
roasting him, being like, I can't believe he's getting paid half a million dollars because he didn't want a birthday party. No, he's getting paid half a million dollars because he said, he said, birthday parties give me a panic attack. But then the company ignored him, threw him a surprise birthday anyway, which gave him the panic attack, and then instead of just apologizing, they fired him for having a panic attack. <laughs> People, you can't fire someone for something you gave them. Pablo Escobar was never like, George, HR found cocaine in your desk, so, uh, yeah, please hand in your ID card, sorry. <laughs> That's not a thing. <laughs> and also, and also, can we talk about this for a moment? What is so important about throwing a birthday party that this company had to do it even though the employee didn't want one, right? If you wanna have a birthday party that works so bad, just throw it. You don't need a reason for it, just ask Boris Johnson. You can do it anytime you want. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Nobody actually wants to celebrate their birthday at the office. Nobody wants to. It's not fun. <laughs> what could be more special than celebrating with my mandatory friends <laughs> and this photocopy machine? <laughs> Happy birthday, me. I want to go to that birthday. <laughs> Here's another thing. Surprise birthdays, especially, are one of the most stressful things ever. Yeah, think about it. Like, people just pop out of you out of nowhere, right, and then they set a cake in front of you and they put it on fire, then you have to extinguish it. <laughs> you don't even get to pick the cake because it's a surprise. What if it's carrot cake, huh? <laughs> yeah, first you scare the shit out of me, then you trick me into eating a vegetable. Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> Come on with your birthday surprise. The bigger picture here is that people need to chill out. I'm sick of people who tell you how to celebrate your own birthday. And we all know who they are, a bunch of birthday Nazis. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, I don't want to do anything this year. No, we are going to do something. Get dressed. Let's go. We are going to celebrate your birthday. Happy birthday. Uba Alles. Ooh, that's not a party. That's a kidnapping. <laughs> we'll celebrate my birthday by force. Stop it. All right, that's it for the headlines. Before we go to a break, let's check in on the stock market, which has been on a wild ride today. Give it up for Michael Costa, everybody. <laughs> Michael? Yeah. Man? Yeah. What on earth is going on in the stock market I today? I mean, I am crushing it in the stock market, okay? <laughs> but before we get into Netflix, th that story about the uh, birthday party, you yeah, know? The surprise yeah, I, I understand how that guy feels, you know? I, I, I've worked many birthday parties. Over a lot of summers, I was a, a male stripper, and they used, to, <laughs> they used to bake me into the cake. And there was this one party, everybody got so drunk, they forgot about me. Eventually, I had to, you know, eat my way out of it, but... <laughs> I can relate to being at a party you don't want to be at, you know? And so I can feel for that guy, so. Oh, that's not the same thing, but I, yeah, that's yeah. a, I, mean, I, I learned guess, a lot about you in this story. I, I guess I should share with you that today actually is my birthday, so that's, oh. yeah, thanks. Oh, oh damn, yeah. what are the chances? Yeah. yeah. All right, well, from me to you, Michael Costa. Yeah. Happy yeah. birthday! Yeah. I, I will sue you right now. <laughs> If you keep, I'll sue all of you if you keep singing that song. I was, okay? I was just going to sing you the happy birthday. Yeah, and that's triggering for me. Okay. okay? Um, let's get into this Netflix yeah, chart, let's shall Netflix. we? Okay, so look, this is a volatile chart, and this is part of the reason why I didn't put my stand up special about a year ago on Netflix, and instead I decided to hide it deep in the bowels of <laughs> Paramount Plus, which <laughs> supposedly is easy to find according to their marketing department. But. Um, Trevor, you can see right here, this is the beginning of COVID. Netflix just took off, okay? What are you gonna do, stay at home and talk to your wife? No. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. Costa, what's this? You're an expert. What is this dip right here? You know, and I'll, I have to be honest with you, from the beginning of COVID to around here, I was certifiably blackout drunk, okay? <laughs> so I can't tell you what that was. I don't know. But I do know that right here, that was, this was that TV show about the woman who did drugs and, and played chess. Uh, uh, Queen's gumbo or whatever, which, which, by the way, I did a bunch of drugs one night and played chess, and I'm not very good, so that show's kind of a lie, all right? So, <laughs> from around here to here, Trevor, you know what we call that technically in the financial world? Uh-huh. Bart Simpson's hairline. It's a very technical term. <laughs> You'll see a dip right here. That was the milk crate challenge. A lot of Americans hurt themselves, couldn't operate their computer. What's important here, Trevor, is how the incline in value, this is all 
Squid Game, ladies and gentlemen, okay? <laughs> Americans love a Korean dystopian future TV show where you have to read in subtitles. Now, <laughs> Netflix made a big mistake and they released right here Tiger King 2. Nobody wants to see that shit. They followed up by releasing around 30 serial documentaries about white male serial killers. Uh, <laughs> So many that I thought, maybe if I want to be on Netflix, I'll become a serial killer. <laughs> I did some night stalking. I never racked up any kills, but I got my steps in. <laughs> this, this is supply chain, all right? You cannot enjoy Netflix if Netflix is trapped in a shipping container in the port of Los Angeles. What? This dip, obviously, Will Smith smacking Chris Rock. <laughs> and then lastly, this final decline. What do you expect when your best show is called Is It Cake? So that's my financial <laughs> breakdown of Netflix. What? Thank you uh, so much for that, Michael. That was, uh, that was surprisingly informative. Yeah. Thank you very much.